Hello and welcome. I'm making this pin cushion today. Felted wool on top, slow stitching on the sides, very simple. It's got a nice weight to it and all its components are either recycled or things that I already had at hand. So come and join me today as I make this step by step and stay with me until the end and I'm going to show another pincushion project that's very personal to me. Let's get started. My base piece of felt is eight inches long and one and a half inches wide. And then I have for the top felted wool from a sweater and my circle is two and a half inches in diameter. Here's what's left of the sweater. I've used it in lots of different projects and I've just cut out this two and a half inch circle from that piece of the sleeve and that's going to be my top. Now I'm going to choose fabric colors and I'm thinking about that top color in that bright bright blue and I want to pick colors that are going to go really well with that. So I'm just pulling out some scraps and I'm really liking these yellow green colors, turquoisey blue, and also this orangey yellow color. So now that I've chosen my colors, I'm going to start with this bright blue as my base fabric to create my collage on. I'm selecting a piece that's just slightly bigger than my felt, and I'm going to begin to build a collage of tiny little pieces of these fabrics that I've chosen. I've been thinking about pin cushions and I wanted to make a small one that I could store my needles in. I have another one for my pins that's by my sewing machine and I wanted one just exclusively for the needles that I'm slow stitching with. So that's where the idea came for this little tiny pin cushion. A place that's really good to find ideas and inspiration is Pinterest. So I created a Pinterest board just for pin cushions. I'll put a link down in the description if you want to have a look at the different pin cushions I've collected on there. And I thought that this round idea with a dome of wool is going to be very soft. There's nothing that's going to interfere with me storing my needles. And of course, I love turquoise and I love blues. And so this is just going to be a really nice companion for me as I slow stitch. I've taken some applique pins and pinned my collage in place and I'm choosing this golden brown floss to do my first pass of slow stitching. So with this pass I'm going to go lengthwise across the piece. This is going to secure down all my tiny bits and it's going to add a lot of texture and color and begin the process of blending all these different pieces together. So when I get to the end, I turn around and come back and then I just thread up my needle with a new piece and I continue. And I'm gonna go back and forth and back and forth all the way to the top. I'm using two strands of embroidery floss throughout this project. And that's what I usually use on most of my stitching. The needle I'm using is a golden eye embroidery needle and they come in a pack from Clover. Here's what it looks like with my rows of stitching in that golden brown. At this point, I'm going to think about the bottom. I have a template that's a circle that's two and a half inches and I've used that to cut out a piece of felt in black. Then I've selected this piece in a very close matching color of that turquoise blue and I'm going to stitch that on. So here it is stitched on. I've done slow stitching in a circular pattern around it. So that's going to be my bottom. Now I'm going to turn back to my piece and I'm going to add a matching blue color. And I'm going to stitch around the patches of fabric to secure them down. This is something I like to do in slow stitching. I think it keeps the pieces from curling up. And I also like the texture and color that it adds. So now that I've added the, the blue color, I'm coming in with a darker shade of blue and I'm going to add slow stitching in the other direction up and down the piece. So here it is with the stitching in the other direction in that darker color. And I think that really ties it in with the color of the top piece that I'm going to be using. It's really unified it. 
So now I need to stitch together this piece to make it a circle. So here it is stitched together. I'm going to turn it inside out, have a look at it, and now I'm ready to stitch on the top. I'm going to fold both pieces in half and join them together. And I'm going to use basting stitches to do this. So I have short pieces of leftover floss in the golden brown color. So I'm going to use those and I'm going to join the top to the bottom at the four corners. And I find the four corners by folding it in half and joining them that way and then folding it in half in the other direction and joining those corners. This process can be a little bit fiddly so I just take my time and make sure that I'm as accurate as possible. I find it very helpful when I'm stitching to have the four corners attached to each other so that I don't end up with a really uneven top and bottom connection. So now that they're joined I just tighten all my little strings and now I'm ready to stitch the top to the bottom. I've chosen this darker blue color to join them together and that's the same color that I used for my up and down slow stitching. So I think it's going to blend really well. And I've decided to use a blanket stitch. And so you can see there what I'm doing is I'm making sure that when I'm coming up with my needle that it's going through my thread. So I'm kind of holding it in my left hand so that it's to the side so that when my needle comes up it's going to go through that thread and create a loop. And I'm just going to work my way all the way around until the top is attached. When I come to one of the corners that I've attached with those little basting stitches, I'll just pull them out and continue stitching. So here my top is attached. It's fitting well. I'm ready for the bottom, but before I attach that, I'm thinking about adding some trim around the area I just stitched. So I've pulled out this green cording and I think it's a really nice match. I'm going to use a matching green floss to stitch it on. The end of it's a bit frayed, so I'm going to snip that off. I've attached my thread, and now I'm going to go around and couch on this piece of cording. I haven't cut it free, I'm just leaving it attached, and I'm going to work my way around. I'm going to hold it in place, and when I get to the other side, I'm going to snip off my end, and take a few extra stitches to join the beginning and the ending together. I'm not too worried about getting it perfect. There might be a little bit of a bump there, but that's fine with me. And there's our trim. That looks really nice. Now I'm thinking about what's going to go inside. And I want to give this pin cushion a bit of weight. So I'm using what I have. And I have this piece of nylon that's a very fine mesh. I've cut out a circle. And I'm going through with running stitches so I can gather this into a little bag. So once I work my way around, I'm going to pull the threads, create my little pouch, and this is what I'm using to fill it. These are ground walnut shells. And I have these on hand because I've used them in other projects. They work really well in pin cushions. They're heavy, and if a needle touches them, it's going to act to sharpen them. You can get these at many pet stores. You may even be able to get it online. I bought a small bag. It's very, very heavy and it's lasted me years and years and years. So I'm filling this pouch with these ground walnut shells. I'm using a funnel and then I'm going to tie it closed to make sure that that little pouch stays securely closed. And because I'm using this stretchy nylon that's very, very tightly woven, those tiny walnut shells are not going to be able to get out. Just as a word of caution, when you're pouring this, there is some dust that comes up. So just be aware of that so you don't breathe it in. I've cut out a two inch circle from cardboard so it's smaller than my base. And I'm going to take my little bag and I'm going to glue it to that piece of cardboard. And that's just going to help me when I put it inside of the pin cushion. So I'm going to let that dry and while that's drying I'm going to take stuffing and I'm going to put it all in the top of the pincushion. Now you generally need more than you think you do. 
just keep packing it in and I'm going to put in as much as I can so there's a nice cushion of stuffing. If you don't have stuffing, you can use fabric scraps. You could use cotton, you could use felt, you could use batting. I happen to have stuffing in my studio, so I'm using that. It's very soft and it's gonna be a really nice cushion for the top. I'm checking to see if I can still fit my bag in there and I can. So that seems like a good amount of stuffing. It's gonna pop out as it sits, but I know that's the right amount. So now I'm taking a safety pin and I'm gonna pin the bottom to the side and then I'm going to go halfway across, just estimating there, and then I'm gonna stitch half of this closed. And that's gonna leave the other half open for me to put in my bag once the glue is dry. Once I get to the other side where the pin is, I can take it out and now half of my bottom is stitched on. I left this glue to dry overnight and now it's connected and I'm ready to put the bag inside the pin cushion. So I'm pushing all the stuffing to the top. I'm popping that bag in. That little disc that I've glued on is helping me keep it oriented the way that I want it. Just moving it around a little bit and making sure that everything's in the place that I want it. This is my last chance because I'm gonna be stitching this closed. So I just take a moment and make sure Everything's the way I want. And then I'm gonna continue on with my stitching and close the bottom. I hold it closed with my thumb of my left hand. I keep adjusting and I move around, making the edges meet and finish my stitching. So here it is, it's all stitched together. I'm really happy with the way it looks. Another option here is to add cording on the bottom. I could add yarn. I could add the green again, both would work. The other option is to add more stitching in that darkest color. And that's what I think I'm gonna do. So one more round of stitching on the bottom, just adding a bit of weight and blending it even more with the rest of the piece. Comparing the stitching I've done on the first half with the other side without the stitching, you can really see that this adds something it adds visual weight and it unifies the piece. So here it is complete, ready to hold my needles. It's soft. It's got a fairly good weight to it because of those crushed walnuts that I put in it. It's gonna be an ideal sewing companion for me. As promised, here's a bonus pin cushion that has a personal connection. This little lamb has been with me my whole life. The last 10 years or so it's been in a drawer I pulled it out and I looked at the label and looked it up and it turns out that these were meant to be planters. I've always had it with me and, and while I was thinking about pin cushions and making my Pinterest board, I thought about this little lamb. So I pulled it out and I thought, what if I was able to make a pin cushion out of that opening? So that's what I'm gonna do. I have another piece of felted wool in these earthy colors and I thought that those colors went really well with this little lamb. There's a seam and a hem. I think this was a coat before, but it's a big enough piece that I think it's gonna fit in there and make a really nice pink cushion. I'm first gonna make a stuffed piece out of a t-shirt. The t-shirt is stretchy. It's gonna work really well to fill with stuffing. It's not gonna be seen because I'm gonna cover it with the wool. So I'm gonna take the sleeve of the t-shirt and from the sleeve, I'm gonna cut out a circle. Then I'm gonna do the same thing I did to make the bag with the ground walnut shells. I'm gonna go around the edges with gathering stitches and I'm gonna pull them tight and then I'm gonna stuff that as full as I can. I'm gonna pull it taut and I'm gonna stitch all around the gathered part to hold it in place. So there's my ball. It's nice and tight, it's stuffed. It's quite big and puffy compared to the hole it's gonna go in, so I'm really happy with the size. And now I'm gonna take my wool and I'm gonna cover this puff ball. And the way I'm gonna do this is I'm going to approach it like wrapping a present. I'm gonna make the ends meet, stitch that down, and then I'm gonna bring the sides in and stitch that down. I'm not too worried about it being a symmetrical shape 
because it's going to be placed inside of my little sheep. I could glue this to the sheep to make it permanent, but I don't want to do that. And because it's such a big puffy piece, bigger than the hole it's going into, once I push it in, it's going to stay there. And that gives me flexibility in the future. If I don't want to continue to use it as a pin cushion, I can pull it out and I still have my little lamb. It's so nice to bring this lamb out again and have it in my space with me. It's always been such a good companion and it gives me such a warm feeling. So here are my two pin cushions. One to keep my needles in when I'm slow stitching and the other one to give me that warm feeling that only a lifelong companion can give you. Looking at the other pin cushion, it almost looks like a little house. Wouldn't it be cute if there was a little door and some windows? Maybe someone will make one like that. Maybe one of you. I hope you enjoyed this project and I wanna thank you so much for joining me. I really enjoyed it. I hope you make your own. Until next time, happy stitching.